Raw driven boar. Paul is enjoying the early spring sunshine tackling wild free roaming pesky pigs on Portuguese farms. You're focusing on the dogs as much as you're focusing on the shot. Fit dog as well. Look at that. That's a fit dog. The best of the British Shooting Show 2020. Thank you to everyone who came to say hello and support us. We have some of the highlights from our remarkable collection of podcast guests. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, and I draw the winners of the British Shooting Show Venison Tasting Competitions. More on what that was later. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. To put it simply, a Monteria is raw. The dogs provide a combination of tenacity, speed and muscle. The handlers are passionate and brave, willing to risk serious injury to dispatch dangerous game. Driven hunting in Germany, Hungary or France can feel formal, a suit and tie affair. In Portugal, you can find yourself on the wrong side of the tracks trying not to make eye contact with the locals. <laughs> They are the Motley crew. We've got a few eyes missing. He's like the big dog, isn't he? He's a big boy. Wolf. <laughs> got wolf. Wolf. Pitbull. Pitbull. Cross with a lurcher. What appealed to me is a, is a, a free range, total wild Monteria. So every, all the game's wild, free movement, fair chase basically. I've seen quite a few pictures of large numbers of game. It's the way they do it. It's the way they, they and manage their, their animal populations and they do it in one hit rather than like we do continuously stalking them and, and nibbling at them. They just come in, hit them hard, get the job done in one hit because it's less impact on everybody. So uh, yeah, excited. Got we're here with a, a group of uh, Danish guys, one English guy which actually um, I didn't know he was coming and, and I haven't seen him for 20 years and that was quite quite a surprise, that was good. Um, so yeah, we're uh, I don't know, I'm still like a little bit sort of like apprehensive, it's a totally new thing. Um, we're just on wild boar today, there's no, uh, no red deer here, so, but we've got these um, Egyptian mongoose. We'd... Yeah, so that would, that'd be quite interesting just to see some one. Of these, some of these dogs look like Egyptian Yeah, they do, yeah. yeah they look, well, wow, they look like deputy dog. <laughs> Everything, so we have a pretty sleek, um, so if you see it, shoot yes. it. That could be an interesting quarry. Yeah, but they, they don't give, they don't, they, they don't, are so phew. sleek. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Is there many? Oh, there is a lot. The big really? Problem, yeah. And you cannot shoot them at night. I would like to bring a 17 inch man in because I saw a big pack of them. But pack? They, they can pack, of course, oh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They can be mobs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it would be nice to shoot them because just basically partridge eggs. We have a lot of partridge, but they take a lot, a lot yeah, of eggs. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it would be nice, but we cannot lump in Portugal. You cannot shoot a 17 inch MR is illegal in Portugal. Two, two is difficult to keep. So there's no no like uh, vermin control at night at all. No, 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 no foxes. No. Or everything daytime. Has to be daytime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And these dogs look crazy. They look like some. They, they yeah, it's, it's funny that they even you're gonna hear it when they drive to the post. They are very quiet unless it's a young pup. Yeah. But it's when they open the the, the gates Doors, that bang, they go. They, they know, know what they are going for. Yeah. yeah. They look like they've done a bit. They, they look <laughs> they, like they're well seasoned uh, yeah, professionals. They, yeah. Didn't do it. The first time I saw a pack of them running towards me, I I bought the honest. I thought. <laughs> Okay, yeah. but they just go through. They don't care for you. They don't want a pet. They don't no, want you not to, interested. to just touch hunt, it. Hunt, just hunt, 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 hunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we'll see. We'll yeah, it'll be we'll, good, yeah. yeah. Hopefully yeah. you'll get lucky well, and get a few shots. I don't care if you hit them. Why do you take the shooting and you that, miss? You can it, always yeah, take the, the nick a little bit. You yeah, know? Perfect, the shot yeah. has to go out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, good. I like it, I like it. We've got a pond down there. 
obviously all this wallowing and stuff here through here. And I like it because we're like, we're, we're off the ground a little bit. We're going up on this bank because obviously I'm going to shoot perfectly, not ruin anything. It's not going to gore us. So I don't want a board to come in and smash the cameraman, not a problem. But I want to keep safe. But uh, got all that bank. It's good, it feels good. It feels really good. Thick, thick vegetation. Got a bit of a, we're using the old 6.5. 6.5 grade more. 156 rain. And uh, there's talk on the back of the, uh, the wagon on the way up. There's a, a Portuguese guy. And he said, ah, oh, these boys are very, very tough. They are big, strong, masculine. I shot one and I use a, a 375 or um, 700, oh, all these big, big calibers. So there's a couple of guys on there using 308s, I think. But I think we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Coaster ride you do every time you do driven ball. I reckon there'll be at least two up there. Maybe one. <laughs> he heard them first. Uh, David? Oh, you, yes. You are well, you, the hunter's friend. The thing is, you, don't, you go on so many hunts, you're never in the country, you're always on holiday. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Um, no, you did, David. Okay. Oh, yeah, back on this one down here now, okay. Here we go, here we go. Come on, boys. Here we go, come on, boys. Come on, boys. Go on. Get him, get him. Go on. takes two shots and the dogs make sure. These guys are doing it to, to control the population, 100%. Obviously we're doing a bit, bit of sport as well, but the dogs are designed to chase, catch and kill. He's a big boy, he's got strength in the head look to kill, but he's got the speed. A fit dog as well, look at that, look. that's a fit dog. It looks thick in your thing. At the end of the drive, we take a walk along the track the pigs took at the very start. There is no blood trail, but Paul did make Hello. contact with the smaller, faster animal. So we've been for a scan yeah. at the top, there's nothing at the top. Yeah, we went for a good look, and uh, the reason we did, because we see this one, we shot him in the bush here. I did a follow-up shot, which I missed, but that pig didn't look, there's no reaction, he's running through the bushes, no reaction at all, and as you can see, he's hit, you know, this is the side we shot, and uh, there's a bullet hole, there look. Quite chuffed that really because under pressure with the dogs behind it. Obviously, when you've got dogs milling around everywhere, you're, you're focusing on the dogs as much as you're focusing on the shot. So, obviously, safety first for the dogs, and we got one. Whew, a lot of pressure. And it's really deceiving. It looks quite nice and clear. We've just been up there, and it is like thick jungle. And there's wallows and, and places they've been sleeping everywhere through there. And uh, it's hard to get through, isn't it? It was, it was serious. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's good, good result. So that was the warm-up bit, was it, at the top? Yeah, that was the warm-up <laughs> act. I got my eye in. But again, it's deceiving. I did bring my range finders, and I didn't range find it, so I thought, well, that's 70 yards, that's simple. But we got up there, and it was 120, 130, and just again, deceiving, really deceiving, because normally I'm on the money with, with distances, but, but I think it wasn't actually doing anything to do with distance or anything else. 
the person to blame is this one. Not the equipment, nothing else. <laughs> Not me. No, actually, you've, you've got me too excited because it's coming, it's coming, they're coming. I know, I can hear them. <laughs> you did a good job there, David. You did, you did spot them well today, again. So, uh, yeah. No, chuff for that, really good. Good start. <laughs> we head off across the farm, picking up the other hunters. There are plenty of boar on the ground, including some that look to have a touch of old spot. So this one looks like it's, it's sort of closer to your neck of the woods, back home. Lost a three spot. <laughs> look at that, look. We shot well, right in the front end. Perfect shot. How many have been shot today? Well, they say they're talking about 35. Um, 35 boar, quite a few foxes actually, a lot of foxes at this end. This is quite a nice end because you've got this guy who stood here, he's got a nice big open spot so you can get a bit, a bit of a line on him. Um, not making excuses, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, perfect. Yeah, he's got 35, so I think that's brilliant. Everyone's seen, seen something or could have had the chance so far anyway. So uh, and you get lucky guys, you get you know three in the bag, so cream on the cake. Well, they're Scandinavians, aren't they? They're Danish, so they're, they know what they're doing. Oh yeah, these boys, yeah, quite a lot of them have been here before, so they know the, the format and the run of it. We rendezvous where we started, near the restaurant. It's impressive considering it is an open farm. Serge points out the male to female ratio, which is indicative of a free range area. On a property like that, you will not see more than two tuskers, right, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. the same as we hold have... That, hold the area. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. that one would be the one that will hope one day to take the place, yeah, yeah, yeah. that will be the boss. Yeah, big dog, yeah. So if, if, we, if we were going to see here five, six, seven tuskers, yeah. that would be a big fence around it, but yeah, that's exactly. completely free, completely organic, yes, yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no fencing, there's nothing, so it's like you see. Got the, got the the big male, yeah. the second in command, or thereabouts, yeah. and you've got the females, females yeah. and then there's like the frizzlings, like the frizzlings, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the, the young, the youngsters. Yeah, but that's 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 normally what you see yeah. on organic place, you yeah, know, yeah. with yeah. no fencing. So yeah. because if you have a fencing, it's easy to put that yeah, five, course, six, course. seven yeah, 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 tuskers, yeah. you know. And we only shoot that place once a year, and that's it. There's yeah. no more, no more shooting that's there it, for the, the that's year. It. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So what happens to all you now then? No. So that way you'll be a, a vet and a, the, the, a big refrigerated truck yeah. comes in and they'll process everything. We cannot clean the deer in the field, the deer or the boar. Yeah, yeah. You cannot, All cannot be done. has to be done here yeah, yeah. and the vet has to check Respect every single one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for disease and then she says, yes, clear, clear, clear. Yeah. No, and that has to go to the tapering place. Yeah. Uh, and then everything goes to Spain. Is it Spain? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, the, the Lord will come, collect and take off the interior, the guts. Yeah and then process, as you see, they are putting labels yeah, for yeah. every single one has to know. Up, yeah. They have to put in that tag, they have to know if there is a male, a female, yeah. um, more or less the year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the boys come in, a big lorry, refrigerated, they clean that in, in no time. Yeah. And then everything goes to Spain. Same with yeah. the deer as well? Same with the everything. We don't have a, um, um, a, tree, uh, a plant that processes game in Portugal. So right, yeah. a lot of stuff goes to Spain. Yeah. And then if you want to buy a Portuguese Come you want to buy? Come back in. Really? Yeah. 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 Right. It's been a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Food. yeah. That's you like yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Food special. <laughs> so, it's been great. Yeah. yeah. Every day is school day, and Paul has definitely learned a lot about free-range Portuguese monterias, and there's more to come. Next time, we complete the trip at a boar-affected cattle farm and a plantation full of reds. If you'd like to join Sergio and Tiago for all sorts of Portuguese and UK hunting packages, go to circuitwildharvest.com. You'd be lucky to find a duo that try harder and have a better hunting philosophy. And if you'd like to find out more about Sacco rifles and bullets, go to sacco.fi. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Sergio. And thank you to the Danish hunting party they were with, hunting hard and playing harder. Now to the playground that is the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. DEFRA is kicking the general licenses can down the road. 
The UK Environment Agency says that the slimmed down general licences system for controlling pest birds put in place last year will now expire on the 31st of July 2020, not the 29th of February. This gives civil servants five months to find a solution to the legal challenge by Chris Packham's group, Wild Justice. It's now the problem of new DEFRA secretary, George Eustace MP, who comes from a farming and shooting background, shown here enjoying an antler throwing competition. That's awkward. Mr Eustace won't be allowed to do that sort of thing under new rules promised by Boris Johnson. Johnson promises to ignore his own consultation into the import and export of antlers and horns and end hunting tourism. The UK Prime Minister told Parliament his government would end the import into this country of trophies hunted elsewhere. Conservative MP Pauline Latham urges Johnson to be decisive in getting rid of importation of hunting trophies into this country, particularly of endangered animals, without acknowledging that hunting tourism saves endangered species all over the world. Meanwhile, veteran British explorer Sir Ranulph Fine says people who go overseas to hunt are bullying bastards. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. DEFRA is reassuring the game shooting community that it is unlikely to ban game bird release in the coming months. While Justice has launched a legal challenge to end the release of pheasants and partridges in the countryside, DEFRA says there will be no sudden knee-jerk reactions following the ongoing review of releasing game birds in designated sites in England. DEFRA Minister Rebecca Powell says it's not in DEFRA's view realistic to expect measures to be implemented before summer, autumn 2020. A video has been shared on the Hunting for Truth social media accounts showing a hunt saboteur pelting a rider from the Flint and Denby hunt with the stone. The mask perpetrator was part of a group of at least eight who were filming and threatening the hunt. They call themselves hunt monitors, not hunt saboteurs. There have been fresh calls to protect livestock from sea eagles. The birds are preying on healthy lambs and ewes on the west of Scotland, leaving surviving ewes too traumatised to mate. The birds were introduced in Scotland in the mid-1970s. Sheep farmer John Gillies from the Isle of Rasse near Skye says the impact these huge birds have is devastating, not just on the animals they attack, but the stress they cause to the people looking after them. Lax has published what it calls a map of cruel sports. It's releasing postcodes and detailed information on clothing or uniform worn by 299 hunts across the UK. Despite Hunt's efforts to enjoy trail hunting, within a law that was written by Tony Blair by Lax, the anti-hunting organisation calls them all illegal hunts. A world-famous sporting shop in Scotland closes permanently this month. After 149 years selling fishing and hunting equipment, Malax of Perth will close its doors. Owners blame the death of the high street. Basque has forced Twitter to remove a tweet. After SMP Pete Wishart went to a Basque evening at a deli, anti-shooters branded Basque as environmental vandals. Basque asked Twitter to remove the tweet and then instructed lawyers. Twitter removed the tweet and apologised. A wildlife trust has sacked one of its wardens for his pro-hunting views. Wiltshire Wildlife Trust sacked former huntsman Peter Loxley-Smith from his position as a woodland warden on the request of local hunt saboteurs. The trust also posted the sacking on the hunt saboteurs Facebook page and named Mr Loxley-Smith, which led to death threats against him from animal rights activists. Brilliant. Thanks to Gemma Moore for sending in the story. British shooter and pest controller Ryan Murphy is doing a walk for charity. Here, shown making his appeal to his Instagram followers, Ryan is walking off as dyke under 12 days to raise money for Prostate Cancer UK. He has asked the field sports community to get behind the cause. Anyone who donates £10 between now and the 1st of March is entered into a draw to win a night's boar shooting. You can donate using the link below. It's the first time we've seen it, an FAC that allows you to buy a rifle but not shoot it. A shooter who asks us not to name him says he received his new FAC from his local constabulary, but there are no conditions that allow him to shoot and he is forbidden from buying ammunition. He can buy a 178 HMR and a 2.2 moderator and that's all. Well, what do they expect you to do with the gun? Just look at it. Pull it on the wall. <laughs> a Russian schoolboy has been killed after a rifle went off in a car. A family friend had placed the gun between the seats of the vehicle. A speed bump caused it to go off, shooting the boy in the stomach. He was rushed to hospital, but died later. The US state of Virginia has rejected a weapons ban bill. 
Virginia Governor Ralph Norden's push to ban the sale of rifles, including the popular AR-15, failed after his fellow Democrats turned down the proposal. Senators voted to shelve the bill for the year, drawing cheers from a room packed with gun rights activists. Virginia is currently in the middle of the country's heated gun debate after Democrats ran heavily on gun control in last year's election. Lead in Gralloch is killing bald eagles, according to scientists. The Cape Fear Raptor Centre, North Carolina's largest eagle rehab facility, says that since November, at least 80% of the eagles that it's put down are due to lead poisoning. The birds are being poisoned after eating animals that have been shot by the bullets. The American Bird Conservancy says the only solution is non-lead ammunition. Antis are displaying new levels of sexism in Norway. Norwegian moose hunter Maya Odin has shared a post showing some of the online abuse she has received since posing for a picture where she has her pregnant bump on show. She says showing empathy and taking care of the family is not a woman's job and that hunting and fishing is not a man's job. A Spanish website says that vegans across the world are walking cabbages instead of dogs. Lumunida.com says the vegans recognise the health benefits of walking but don't want to walk live animals. They say that among the advantages of cabbages over dogs is that they don't bark or start fights with other vegetables. Happily the story is not quite true. It's actually a performance art show by Chinese artist Han Bing. Thanks to Andy Chasney for the story. And finally, a young female badger surprised shop staff when it fell through the ceiling of a store in Northampton. Shop managers believe the animal accessed the shop via ducks in the ceiling and hid there before its impromptu arrival on the shop floor. It was caught by a local wildlife group and released. Thanks to Steve Kearney for the story. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, and thank you, Amy, for putting it together behind the scenes. Now, later in the show, we've got a roundup from the British Shooting Show. First up, here's some information about one of my favourite game fairs. It's the Scottish Game Fair at Schoon Castle in Perth. That's on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of July 2020. Visit scottishfair.com for more details. Now let's have a look at what you lot have been up to in the last few weeks. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, Dougie Pocklington here. On the morning after the night before, that night being the night that I went out and shot my 500th fox of the year. Um, Needed six more uh, with two nights to go, so uh, we went out and uh, and found them. So quite an unbelievable year for me, really. Hello, Charlie. This is Nigel War in Germany. I'm sitting here on the side of a river hunting for a uh, koi poo or nutria. Uh, I've shot two. I haven't picked them up yet because we're shooting a bit, uh, carrying on a bit. Anyway. Hello Charlie, I'm Alex and I'm Chris and we're at the Yachten Hunt exhibition in Dortmund. Hello Charlie, we're out here in Germany on the Wild Boar. We've been sitting in high seats for the last three nights. I'm with Jerry, Andre, Barry and just me, Eddie. Uh, we've got a couple of shareholders with us, so pleased to know. Uh, all good, yeah, we're off home now, we've got another uh, 10 hours in the shop and we'll be back to good old Brighton. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Please keep them coming. Now, the many hundreds of you we met at the British Shooting Show will probably want to know who won the Pigeon Experience Day with Andy Crow, the Deer Stalking with Neil Rowntree and with Paul Childerley and the Game Cookery Day with Kai Atbrin. Well, before you find that out, let's find out what happened at this year's British Shooting Show. It was raw, it was naked, it was even romantic. 
Annette Mitchell, will you marry me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It was the British Shooting Show 2020 at the Birmingham NEC. Tens of thousands of people came to see the latest kit, meet friends, and they could even bump into our guys on our stand. Kayap Bryn was busy cooking all weekend for our Name That Game competition. Results in a minute. Hang in there. And we had a range of hunters and shooters on our podcast stage, kicking off with Ollie from Love Island. And they said... You know, it's just a couple of small, small press stories that were about you, you know, surrounding your hunting background. I was like, well, I was half expecting that to come out. You know, was it pheasant shooting? And they were like, well, your stuff, your stuff you did in Africa. And I was like, right, okay. Anyway, so I thought they sort of that was the end of it. They chucked me on a flight, flew me back, and I got back. And my manager, who is the ex editor of the Sun, I then realised it was quite who, who actually was just bit, would then become my manager. I was like, right, if he's on board, then probably there's a it's and sure enough front page of every newspaper. Well, that sorts that out. We had Tim Pilbeam on the podcast stage talking about Moose and Australian comedian Bruce's shooting from Instagram, who insisted on going topless. One of my favourites was my old friend Terry Doe, who told me about his Romany childhood and this gem. Do travellers actually bake hedgehogs in clay? Go from this podcast and be forever informed. We did not, ever, not once, not at any stage in our development, bake them in Play. Thank you, Terry. Thought not. Pete Moore from Shooting Sports Magazine came on to talk about guns, and the guys from Blasa in Germany told me about sporting gun innovation. Then David took to the stage, and the most popular podcast of the weekend was Andy Crow and the South Somerset Ferretist Jeff Jefferson on Where Have All the Bunnies Gone? Which they answer seriously and not so seriously. Uh, Why do you love digging? Because I'm a nutter. I I have put all these films into a playlist for you so you can watch them all. They're all around 20 minutes long and we will get the audio versions of them onto Spotify and iTunes as soon as we can. Now the competition and what a fabulous competition it was. You had to guess the mystery venison provided by Kayap, Brin's Game and Flames. And 200 of you entered and got the answer right, raising £2,000 for our feather ruffling journalism. So, even if you don't win, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, let's do the draws. Starting with Kai. We've put uh, Game Cooking with Kai into my special app on uh, my phone. And as you know, this randomly chooses a winner. There you are. Not that many of you, 14 names, so one of you could be a winner. Here we go, one, two, three, choose. And the lucky winner is Oliver Simmons from Burton on the Water. I can even get it to say his name. Oliver Simmons, Burton on the Water. How about that? So, well done, Oliver. We'll be in touch with you about arranging your, your cookery day with Kayat Bryn. Now we have got Chinese water deer stalking with Paul Childley. That was very popular. That's going to be up in Bedfordshire. Are you ready? We've got 66 names there. Choose one. And the lucky winner is Matt Grove from Hook. Matt Grove from Hook is the winner there. Get it to say the name again, shall I? Here we go. Matt Grove Hook. There we are. Matt Grove Hook. Penultimately, it's Hind Stalking with Neil. That's up at uh, Ardner Merkin in uh, the Highlands of Scotland. 54 names. Choose one. And the winner is Mark Callahan from the Wirral. Mark Callahan, Wirral. Mark Callan Wirral. Well done, Mark. We'll be in touch with you about that. I think he's got quite a tight window around about December, so you'll need to choose your date carefully, but I'm sure you'll have a fantastic time. And finally, it's Pigeon Shooting Experience Day with Andy Crow. 90 names, I'm afraid. So good luck. Here we go. Choose William Richardson from Harbour Magna. Here we go. William Richardson, Harbour Magna. William Richardson, Harbour Magna will arrange for you to go pigeon shooting with Andy. Now let's have a look at what the world has been up to on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Stephen Rinella and Meat Eater have brought out a collection of short films profiling three people connected to the natural world. This one is Buck Bowden, who tells us how to become a hunter and guide in the Alaskan wilderness, thanks to Alexander Laver for sending it in. Sent in by Lee Baragwanath, here Foxy 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 Parts 1 and 2 are the latest from Bolt Action Productions in Australia, featuring, you guessed it, fox shooting. In New Zealand, Wild NZ puts out Kawika Seeker Deer Hunt, 
first for 2020, which has him on an evening mission into Kuikasika country, resulting in a tasty animal for the freezer. Yacht Faber, literally hunting fever, is after fox and wild boar with some quick shots in this film. He joins a hunter called Axel on the last drive of a driven hunt in Norway. Staying in Norway, Christopher Clausen makes this short film about fox bolting in the snow. It's a promo for his Clausen TV subscription channel. America has big back country. Here is an Idaho mule deer hunt from Switchback Outdoors with Ross, his son Brody, and his dad taking three great Idaho bucks on film. Staying big, here's a report from the Utah Sky Trials. It's falconry, American style, with falconers competing against each other on birds in the state's Rush Valley. And finally, gamekeepers in the UK faced with predator problems might learn from this film from Growing Deer TV in the US. Grant is targeting raccoons to protect turkey nests. Different wildlife, same principles. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. That's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website. Link in the description below. You can click the like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you can pop your email address into our register page. And we'll contact you with a newsletter about this show, which comes out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Plus, if you back us, and there's another link in the description below to do that, I will get in touch with my newsletter, my behind the scenes vlog every Tuesday and you can really get under the skin of Field Sports Channel there. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.